Welcome to Bible Truths. We're glad to have you with us this morning. We hope that indeed that you will take a Bible out and that you'll follow along in the Scriptures as we take from the Scriptures and, and consider some things that Jesus said, some things that are important to the well-being and the spiritual life of, of all people, truthfully. Look, if you will, in Matthew, the 16th chapter. We will start our reading there, starting with the fifth verse, if you will, follow along in your Bible. Now when his disciples had come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, O oh, ye of little faith, why do you reason among yourselves, because you have brought no bread? Do you not yet understand, or remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets you took up? Nor the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many large baskets you took up? How is it? You do not understand that I do not speak to you concerning bread, but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. But now we want to turn in our Bibles to Mark. If you have a Bible, to turn to Mark, the 8th chapter. We want to consider the 13th through 21st verses, because in these verses... And Mark's account, as the Holy Spirit spoke through Mark, we understand that Jesus will, tell, will say a great deal more than, than what Matthew has recorded in his, which doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just means that Mark has a better explanation in, the, in this particular case. So I'm reading in Mark, the 8th chapter, starting, if you will, with the 13th verse. Here's what we read. And he left them, and getting into the boat again, departed to the other side, now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, and they did not have more than one loaf with them in the bread and the boat. Then he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes do you not see, and having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves of the five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? They said to him, Twelve. Also, when I broke the seven for the four thousand, how many large baskets full of fragments did you take up? And they said, Seven. So he said to them, How is it that you do not understand? And having walked and talked with Jesus as the apostles did, it, it was probably a very difficult thing but, and especially when they didn't understand sometimes, many times, what it was the Savior was saying. And as a result of that, Jesus would, it appears to me that he's frustrated with them because of what he says. When he says, how is it you do not understand? I know that I've, I've spoken to my own children, even my grandchildren, and many times I wonder if I'm just talking to hear myself talk because they don't listen. And if they're listening, they're not really hearing. Because you say, well, why is that? such an important thing. It's an important thing because Jesus expected them to understand what he was saying. They expected them, if you will, to make a necessary inference in reality. But the thing was that they didn't do it. They looked at themselves. They were looking at, at if you will, literal things. Notice with me in this context of these scriptures. So he said to them, how is it you do not understand? And then he said, why do you reason among yourselves? Well, Reason among yourselves is the idea of what people do today, religiously. Instead of going to the Bible and reading what the Bible says or what Jesus said, they ask their neighbor or they ask their friends or they go to some priest or preacher and they ask them, well, what does this mean when they should read it for themselves? God did not give us a word we cannot understand alike. He's given us a word we can all understand alike if we're listening, if we're willing to obey. You see? It's not the hearers that are justified by the Lord, but the doers of the word. That's the thing that's so important in James' first chapter. We're told that. And it's interesting that as you think about those things, that you consider that Jesus said, why do you reason among yourselves? That is, they're looking for human answers. And that is a, that is a grave problem in the religious world today. Because they're looking, they're looking for something that pleases them, or, if you will, agrees with what they think the Bible says. As I speak to you, Today, I'm not asking you to believe a word that I'm saying. 
I'm not asking you to trust me. What I'm asking you to do is to open your Bible and consider what Jesus said and consider how when the apostles were hearing him, they didn't understand. And sometimes, my friends, we don't understand either, but it doesn't mean we can't understand. It just means we don't understand right now. As we grow spiritually, we can understand. Our, our understanding becomes clearer as we read God's Word more and make the application from the Scriptures. It's easier to have someone tell you what to believe. It's easier to have someone to tell you what we believe or what the church I'm part of believes. That's not, but that's not how the Scriptures are laid out. That's not how they're to be interpreted or nor how they're to look, looked upon because, you see, God, the Almighty God, has revealed Himself through His Son Jesus in these last days. In Hebrews, the first chapter and the first two verses, that's exactly what it says. And so we as, as, as hearers, we are those who read, we need to not just listen, but we need, to, we need to reason with the Scriptures themselves. I've held Bible studies before with people who actually, as I had an open Bible and was discussing the Scriptures, reach over and shut my Bible. And I said, how can we have a Bible study with a closed Bible? And they said to me, well... They said, we, they said well, well, we just want to talk about the Bible. I said, well, no, I'm here to study the Bible. I'm not here to talk about what's outside the Bible. I'm here to talk, about, talk with you about what the Bible says, for the Bible is the truth. I'm not asking you to follow me. And again, I'm not asking you to, to put your trust in me. I'm saying put your trust in the Lord. Put your trust in His Word, that His Word is truth, and that you can understand that truth. Now, Jesus went on to say, do you not yet perceive, or nor understand. In other words, why haven't you made the necessary inferences? What, what is wrong? We find in Luke, you can turn hold your place, if you will, at Mark 8, and turn over here to Luke, <clears throat> the 12th chapter. In Luke, the 12th chapter, and I'm going to read some verses here, in Luke 12, these are the words of Jesus. I, I feel confident that people will listen to the words of Jesus. I hope they will. This is what Jesus said. Luke 12, verse 54. And it says, giving you time to find the place, I hope you found it. Luke 12, verse 54. Then he also said to the multitudes, whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, a shower is coming, and, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, there will be hot weather. And there is. Hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? Yes, and why even of yourselves do you not judge what is right? That's the thing that, that the question the Lord asks. How is it you don't discern this age? You can understand the physical things of this world. I'm not suggesting you take a hammer and hit your finger with it, but before the hammer goes down and hits your finger, you know it's going to hurt. You, you have deducted that. In fact, if you put your hand in the fire, you probably pull it out pretty fast because, you know, that's not something you want to do because you have deducted in your mind that, yes, that indeed, if you will, there's pain involved. Now, let me continue on with this thing. Is your heart still hardened? And that's another problem with, with Bible readers and Bible, Bible study. People approach God's scriptures with a preconceived notion. And quite frankly, it sometimes is the traditions of men that they have followed. And as a result of that, their heart, their heart is hard. It's hardened from the standpoint that they're not willing to listen to anything else. Even as I'm speaking, there are those who say, well, yeah, but you're that church cross preacher, and we all know the church cross. They think they're the only ones going to heaven. I said, no, that's, that's not true. I, I will say to you that anyone outside of Christ Jesus will not go to heaven. Because Jesus said, no one comes to the Father but by me. And so I understand what Jesus said in that, in that regard. And Jesus died for his church. Now, but the thing is, though, there's people in the church of Christ that won't go to heaven either. Because people think that religion, it has to do with location. It has to do with the group they're with. And the truth is, in the judgment day, according to 2 Corinthians 5, in verse 10, we must all appear for, before the judgment seat of Christ to give an answer to the things that are done in the body, whether they're, whether they're good or whether they're evil. We're all going to stand individually before the Lord God, for the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going, to, he's going to pronounce a sentence. It's going to happen. Jesus is the judge of the world. Jesus said to them also, having eye, you do not see. Well, I like to look at that and say, it's what are you looking at? A lot of people religiously look at many things. 
I know that I was rather shocked and quite, I was dismayed when the report came out that someone said that they had seen uh, the face of Christ in a, a plate of spaghetti and meatballs on a Pizza Hut sign. And I thought, how shallow. Jesus is revealed through his words. His words. Or the woman down in Mexico who who said that she thought she saw Jesus' face in the face of a tortilla. Dear friend, Jesus is found in the Word of God. These words are inspired words. And Jesus has revealed himself in the words that he spoke. He said, having eyes, do you not see? In other words, do you not spiritually see? What are you looking at that's brought you to the conclusion that you've come to? And having ears, you do not hear. Well, again, what are you listening to? Some people pride themselves on being so open-minded and listening to all kinds of religions and all kinds and all kinds of things of people. And I say to them, you may be quote unquote open-minded, but are your, is your mind open to the scriptures? Do you realize that they are the words of Christ? Christ Jesus the Lord, who is the Savior of the world. He was the Son, the only begotten Son of God, who has spoken, if you will, through these words and through the words of his apostles as they were guided by the Holy Spirit. This was promised in John the 16th chapter, the 13th verse, to the apostles. And last but not least, Jesus said, and do you not remember? And that, of course, is the problem with Bible study sometimes. People have selective memory. They remember what they want to. And if it's done pleasant, then they don't listen to it. They don't think about that because it's not something that they want to do. I know in 2 Peter 3 and verse 5, he said there are those who willfully forget, Peter said, and that's exactly what happens. People willfully forget some of the lessons of life they've learned. The Bible will guide you in a way that you can understand why things are as they are or why you feel the way you feel even. Quite frankly, that's what the Scriptures will do. But you have to put your trust in them. You have to be willing to do the will. Jesus said in John in John 7, 17, if a man is willing to do the will of my Father, that's John 7, 17, if a man is willing to do the will of my Father, he shall know the teaching, whether I speak for myself or whether it is from God. Well, many people are willing to know. You see, they're willing to know, but they're not willing to do. Therefore, those who are willing to know will never know. Because unless you have the willingness to do God's will, you won't know. That's what Jesus said. John 7, 17. It's very simple. Not hard to understand. Some people say, well, well I've just got to hear a preacher. I've got to hear a preacher. To... No, you don't. You can read the Bible for yourself, my friend. You most certainly can. And I'm going to tell you that I know it's a scary thing to read God's Word. Because there's things there that I, I, that I don't understand. Things that, that are just, I, I just don't get it. I don't get what it's about. And it, it, just, it, it just kind of goes over my head. But the thing about it is, though, is that keep reading it. You'll be amazed how your mind will open through the Scriptures. The Scriptures will teach you. But you have to be willing to do what it says, not what know what it says. I'll give you this illustration. People who want to know only listen to things they think are right, what they think is right. Some will say to me, well, you just follow in church Christ doctrine. I said, really? What is that? I said, you know, there are people, I'm sure, out there in the world who call themselves the Church of Christ who follow all kinds of doctrines of men. But that's not, that's not the church of the Lord that I know. Church the Lord I know has only creed as God's word. And Jesus Christ, the Savior, the head of the body, if you will, the church, as Ephesians, the first chapter, 21st, 22nd verses teaches, that we know that he, if you will, is the one that dictates what happens in his church. Someone says, well, you're a preacher. Don't you have a church? I said, no, I don't, honestly. And they say to me, well, what do you mean? Sure, you, sure you have a church. I said, I don't have a church. I'm not saying that in pride or to be ugly. I don't have a church. What, it, what the problem is, is that people's concept has been so tied to religious error that they can't see beyond the religious, I call it diatribe, I call it what I want to, traditions of men, they can't see beyond it. Because they're all wrapped up in it with their families. They're wrapped up with those who believe certain things. Listen, if I believe what's wrong, I'm wrong. If I believe what's right, I can be right, but it'll only be because I'm doing the right things of God. Not because I in myself am just such a great guy and and, and so and, and somehow, and this is the part really you should listen to, that somehow God has spoken to me and told me something, see, which he has not done. God will not tell me anything that he won't tell you through his word. Because again, people all reason sometimes is thrown out the window when it comes to God's word. 
There are logical things that Jesus said to his apostles, and we've just read them. I know that Bible class teachers, one time they did this, and I, 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 it's not to ridicule Bible class teachers. I hats off to them as they teach little children, and they work. But they would do this. They would say, well, this is the church, and this is the steeple. Open it up, and this is the people. That's wrong. This is the church, the people of the church. This is a building. I don't know why it has a steeple. But anyway, the point of it is, though, is that that's the point of it. The church is the people. It's not the building. It's the people. And the head of the, of the of Lord's church is Jesus himself, Jesus Christ. Why won't people let Jesus be the head of his church? They said, well, we do. No, you don't. If you don't follow a book, chapter, and verse of what you're doing, you're not giving Jesus the credit. You're not giving Jesus first place in everything. And that is the problem. So many times people are turned off by Bible study or by religious discussion because they tend to take an academic approach. They take an academic approach and, and that has taken the place of sound Bible application. You see, that's the problem. Some preachers will preach, I'm sure with good intentions, what they think, or they'll preach what the people think, or they'll preach what everybody has accepted, but that's not what a gospel preacher is supposed to do. The Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 4 made it very clear to Timothy, the evangelist. He said this, I charge you before, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But the thing about that is, is that people are conditioned or have come to expect the preacher to be the star, to be the one that everybody follows, his every word. The only reason I'd ask you to follow every word that I say this, you know, today is that you might search your Bible to see if these things are so. Because I am not, I am not Jesus Christ, and I am not inspired from the standpoint of God putting His Holy Spirit upon me and God telling me something that He hasn't spoken through His Son. I am a gospel preacher. I am a man. If you'll read, look at Acts the tenth chapter, and you'll consider what Peter said to, if you will, to Cornelius when Cornelius and he came to the house of Cornelius. Cornelius fell down at his feet to worship him. To worship him is what scriptures teach. Go back. And read Acts the 10th chapter in that account. Peter stood, he bent over, he picked Cornelius up. He said, he says, get up. He said, I'm a man. I'm a man just like you. Now that's something you don't hear sometimes because there are preachers who want, they want the accolades and they want, they want the attention and, and really the glory. And through to the glory belongs to Jesus. Dear friends, why do people preach for money? Why are they preaching for the fame? To truly follow Jesus, one is going to have to suffer. One is going to have to put the Lord first above everything else. Why would Jesus say, you cannot love mother, father, sister, brother, anybody, nobody more than me? Why would Jesus say that? Because that is the condition of following Jesus. Many people say, well, well, I just don't get it. Why would Jesus say, how is it you do not understand? Because the question is, why don't you understand? What has kept you from understanding this? You should have understood that. It is interesting back in Mark the 8th chapter as we talked about before that indeed that he says to them also when I broke the seventh of the 4,000 how many large baskets full of fragments did you take up in the 20th verse? And they said seven. So they did understand that bread was not a problem for Jesus had indeed broken those by miraculous had, had produced bread. He wasn't talking about bread. He was talking about doctrine. And today, friends, a lot of people are looking for the bread and not considering the doctrine. That is part of the problem. Because they're looking for, it's always the question, of, well, what are you going to do for me, God? What are you going to do for me, Jesus? Well, let me tell you something. This doesn't take a lot to understand that God has loved us so that he gave his son to die on the cross as a perfect sacrifice for our sins, for the sins of the world. And Jesus offered himself up freely so that we in obedience to his will might have the forgiveness of our sins and walk in the light 
as he is in the light, 1 John 1, verse 5 through 7. It is, in fact, that the darkness, and I turn to this part of our lesson this morning, or this today, that the darkness does not comprehend. Turn your Bibles to John, in John the third chapter, if you will, please. In John 3, verse 19 through 21, this is what we read. And this is the condemnation, this is Jesus speaking, and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God or wrought in God, the old King James Version renders it. And it's interesting that those practicing evil hate the light. They hate the light. And they won't come to the light. The light of what? The light of His Word. Walking in the light of His Word means that you make the application from the Scriptures to yourself. How many times in preaching a gospel a gospel sermon have I had people meet me at the back door and say, I said, that was a great sermon, preacher. You really told them today. And I, and I tell them, quite frankly, well, I really didn't tell anybody but myself. For most of the sermons I preach are to myself. Maybe that's selfish, but I need to hear what's being said. Because I'm, I'm not the one that's going to judge you in the judgment day. The Lord Jesus is. You should listen to his words. You consider what the Bible teaches, not what men think or what they like or what they've done for centuries. That has nothing to do with it. It's what Jesus said. Go back to his words. And you say, well, wasn't Jesus mean to say to them? Wasn't he mean to say to his apostles? How did you do not understand? And yet he was kind to say that to them. He wanted them to understand. Yes, he would later open their minds and their minds would fill up with the Holy Spirit would open their minds to the scriptures so they remember what he has said to them. But friends, we today have the entire Bible. We have a panoramic view of the truth of the, of the Lord. And as a result of that, we can know what the truth is. If we're willing to trust his word, if we're willing to trust that God has made us with an ability that we can read and understand I'll, I'll say this. I used to teach elementary school long years ago, and I taught children in third grade. And I had a second grade that came up to the third grade in my class, and I asked, I asked one, of the, one of the children to read for me a, a paragraph. And so they did. And when they read, and when they read, they, um, they read it beautifully. Uh, there wasn't uh, the punctuation, uh, the, di the dictation. Everything was perfect. And then I asked them the question, I asked the young man the question, do you, what did you just read? What did it say? And he said, looked at me and said, I don't know. And you know, he's being honest. He didn't know. He could read, but he didn't read with comprehension. So I took out a few words out of the paragraph he read, and I explained them to him. And then he went back and read it again. And he said, oh, it really says that, doesn't it? And I said, yes, it does. So you see, even a child can read and understand what is being said by the things they read. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Do you understand that, my friend? Do you understand that you need to have a Bible with you every day? Carry it with you. A small Bible, if you will. But bring a Bible with you. Not these Bibles, if you will, that are filled with the ideas of men. But indeed, a Bible which you can open and read for yourself. For yourself. And let me give you a little challenge here. I don't know what church you go to. I really don't know. And I don't. But I'm going to say, tell you something. No matter where you go, you take out your Bible and you measure what the preacher is saying of the priest against what the Bible teaches. You be the one that takes the initiative and you read. And my friend, if they're not preaching what the Bible teaches, if they're not teaching what Jesus said, then they're a false teacher. I don't care how kind they've been or what they've done for you. They're going, you're going to lose your soul because you're listening to the wrong thing. You're listening, and your family's listening to the wrong thing. You need to listen to the scriptures and consider what is said. I appreciate your kind time and consideration of these things. And I hope that you'll take your Bible and you will indeed take these verses and look at them very carefully and consider. Because without this, where, where will you be? You'll be lost. There's a verse in Matthew 7, 21 through 23 that's very important to me in this lesson. And it's this. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who doeth the will of my Father who is in heaven, for many in that day shall say to me, But Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy by your name, cast out demons by your name, 
do many mighty works, and then I shall declare unto them, Depart, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. It's the word iniquity that's so important to understand. Lawlessness. Because the word carries with it the very idea of people becoming a law unto themselves. And that's what I was thinking about. Thank you.